What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today I'm going to do a follow up to a video I posted last week where we saw Martin O'Malley talk about the trust funds and talk about the good news when it comes to the Social Security program and how the trust funds will be extended for one more year, at least right now. So 2035 is the target date. If Congress doesn't act, we're going to see about a 23% cut in benefits. And so it's been extended. It was 2033, 2034, and now it's 2035. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to take a look at the petition. I'm going to show you guys the new numbers, and this is good news when it comes to the petition, and then I'll let you guys know how you can sign the petition as well. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, if you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to join our membership, you can. You'll get customized emojis as well as badges. All you need to do is hit the join button below. Okay, so now we're going to take a look and a listen to a financial reporter. She's going to be talking about what we talked about last week, that announcement that Martin O'Malley, the commissioner of Social Security, made about the extension of the trust funds. And this, I mean, it's good news but we need that extension to be more than just one year, but she's gonna talk a little bit about it, so here we go. Calls and comments in just a few minutes, but first joining us to tell us a little bit more about that report is CNBC personal finance reporter, Lori Conish. Uh, Conish, excuse me, Lori, good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. So why don't you start by telling us about the depletion date that seemed to be making a lot of news this week? So this is modest good news for the Social Security program that the Funds, the combined trust funds for the program are expected to now run out in 2035, which is one year later than was previously projected. And that's due to strong signs in the economy. We have, um, you know, low unemployment, strong labor um, growth and wage growth as well. So those are signs or those are factors that contribute to people being able to work. And when they're working, they're actually paying into the program, which helps it. And that the depletion date seems to be a bit of a, a moving target. It moved. It was pushed back this year. That's happened before. How likely is it to continue happening or even slide backward? It can slide backward. And that's that's one thing to watch since 2012. I think it's been between like 2033 and 2035. So it's not necessarily unexpected that it would be in this range. Um, I think the key thing to really watch is the fact that we are getting closer to this depletion date, which means inevitably something needs to happen or we will face these inevitable benefit cuts. And as of now, if something isn't done, what will those cuts look like? So if nothing is done, there will be an across the board benefit cut and that will include all beneficiaries. It won't be you know, something that you can choose who is the neediest, who needs the full benefits, or who maybe can sacrifice, you know, some of the income that they're receiving. So it's really imperative that lawmakers look at this beforehand and try to address it so that people don't face an income shortfall come that time. What are some of the most probable changes to the program or what's being looked at? So there are a lot of changes that are being talked about, and some of the most popular ones are raising the maximum taxable earnings. So currently around $168,000 is taxed for Social Security. And once your earnings are above that, they no longer fall um, under the purview of Social Security. So there's the idea that maybe higher earners could be paying more into the system. There's also the idea that we could raise the retirement age. Some people are working longer. Could they you know, hold off on claiming Social Security benefits? There could also be ways of you know, changing the cost of living adjustments every year. Could they be more generous or less generous? These are the kinds of questions that lawmakers will look to answer. And you mentioned that, yes, we are getting closer. We're nine years out from this new projected depletion date. Why is it better that Congress acts sooner rather than later? So the longer they wait, the more dramatic the cuts will have to be. For example, a former Social Security Administration official was saying this week that under President Barack Obama, you could have just eliminated the taxable maximum, 
taxable maximum earnings and at that time and solve the problem. But right now, that's not enough to take care of the shortfall. So there will have to be a combination of changes. And the longer we wait, the more dramatic they may have to be, and they may have to phase in faster. So people might see changes sooner than they might have liked. And you mentioned some of the possible changes, some of the ideas being floated. What are some of the biggest challenges to those actually being implemented? I think the biggest challenge is actually getting people to plan their retirement in accordance with these changes, right? We don't know what will happen. Um, Can you plan to work longer? Can you plan to pay more taxes? These are things that people would want to know about beforehand. I think it's also a challenge for lawmakers to maybe address some of these sensitive topics. These would require tax increases, maybe benefit cuts, a combination of both. And there really isn't a lot of political appetite to make those kinds of changes. Okay, so there you saw she was talking about some of the the challenges that Social Security is facing right now when it comes to the trust funds. Uh, she was also talking about some of the the solutions. And this, these solutions are the same solutions that I talk about uh, pretty much every day. She talked about raising the cap, so raising the cap on uh, people making 168600 or more. She talked about the cost of living adjustment, and it was interesting what she was saying there, the cost of living adjustment. She was saying they could change the cost of living adjustment so there there could be an increase, but guess what? They could change the cost of living adjustment to where there could be a decrease as well, okay? Because if you're looking at reforming Social Security, you do have some lawmakers that want to make cuts to Social Security. And one of the first things that they'll probably look at when it comes to cuts is either raising the full retirement age and or looking at COLA, looking at the cost of living adjustment and maybe use a different metric that would provide less than the current COLA that we're seeing right now. Right now they're using the the CPIW. They could go to another calculation where now you're not going to receive as much in your your cola increase every year or they could just get rid of the cola increase as a whole so you don't you no longer get a cola increase and so every year there's no cost of living adjustment and you're going to have to we're going to have to hope that inflation doesn't skyrocket because if it does you might not be able to get benefits now i'm not saying all this stuff to scare you guys what i'm trying to say is look congress they need to act and they will do something they're not going to let This uh, social security, you know, they call it the third rail. They're not going to let it get to a point where we're going to see a 23% cut to social security benefits in what, 11 years. They're not going to do that. So there will be some changes to social security, but we need to be informed to know what the options are because these politicians, some of them, they really want to wreck the program. They really want to take from the program and as she was stating, when it comes to the time frame, it's better that they act now. And it, that's, why it's, that's why I talk about this all the time. It's better that we know what's at stake and we pressure these politicians to act now because we know that they're, they'll probably, some of them, want to wait until the last minute because if you wait until the last minute, now these politicians have more leverage and they can say, you know what, we're going to have to make some drastic cuts. I'm sorry. You know, this is the way it is. We're just going to have to do this, even though 11 years out, we're 11 years out right now, and we can make some changes like, just like she was talking about with when uh, President Obama was president, they could have made some minor changes at that point, and the program would have been fine. But if we just wait, and we wait another 11 years, then guess what? They're going to talk about, or we need to raise a full retirement age, but they're going to expedite that raising of the full retirement age, where even if they were talking about raising the full retirement age right now, it's probably not going to impact people who are in their 50s and 60s, where if they wait 11 years, you might be in a situation where you're a Gen Xer and you're thinking, oh, I can retire at 67. That might be a couple years, but now they're raising the full retirement age and it's effective immediately. So now you're you might have to push off your retirement until 69 or till 70. So this is, it's it's a very serious situation. We do need to talk about this. I know, and I get people all the time that tell me in the comments, why are you talking about this? Why do you keep talking about this? Nothing's happening. And my response to that is we need to keep the word out. We need to pressure these politicians. We need to let them know 
that this is a serious matter. That's why we have the petition. That's why I'm sending out letters. I'm trying to do my part. Unfortunately, you do have some people out there that they don't want to do anything. They don't want to do anything. They just want to say, you know what? We should be getting more in Social Security benefits, but they don't. Some of some of the people that are watching my videos right now will not sign the petition, but they won't do that. But they will complain on my channel. They will complain in the comments and say that I talk about it too much and all of this. But they're not helping. At this point, we need support. We need to get the politicians to understand that this is something that needs to happen. And you have to remember who is the boss. Well, we should be the boss. Major corporations are probably the boss of, of politicians, but we need to exercise our right to lobby these politicians to let them know this is something that needs to happen. And this is something that needs to happen now. We can't wait 11 years. We can't wait seven or eight years. We need to handle the situation as soon as possible. And so hopefully you guys get what I'm saying here. Sign the petition so we can send that out. And if you are sending letters to your representatives and to your senators and to the president, to the, the former president who wants to become the next president, make sure you link the, the change.org petition to that. So you can say, look, there's support for a social security increase. And here's some of the support. And hopefully we can get these numbers into the thousands, the hundred thousands. That way, these politicians will look at it and say, yes, we're going to need to deal with this. And we need to deal with this now. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one.